I'm gonna make them sweat. They're rich, degenerate. Precisely what we need. I thought about it. I want more. I wait. I think. I plan. This is a video essay about the 2017 Bertrand Mandico film, The Wild Boys, which I saw in 2017. But really, in a way, this is a video about the dangers of nostalgia and the beauty of listening to the unknown. Let me begin by saying this. As we get older, it's easy for our tastes to fossilise. We find a bunch of things when we're younger, and as we get older, we cling tighter and tighter and tighter to this bunch of things we found when we were younger. Slowly but surely, we end up being that old person at parties who has nothing positive to say about new creations from over the last 20 years or so. Instead, we're endlessly going on about things we enjoyed when we were younger, which is close to saying, I miss being young, and I wish I was still young. I'm not young anymore, and I really like films. So the problem for someone like me is finding new things, new films. For example, David Cronenberg had a big impact on me as a young person. So if a new David Cronenberg film comes out, I will watch it. But how do I end up finding something new? How do I discover a new David Cronenberg? The answer I found is to just jump in and watch a lot of films by people I've never heard of before. And that was how, in 2017, I found myself watching Bertrand Mandico's The Wild Boys. First, I'm not saying Mandico is the new Cronenberg. That was just a metaphor. Second, this film is what the young people might call transgressive AF. It is really not for everyone, and I mean that very strongly. I know a lot of people for whom this film is simply too much, too strong, too out there, too difficult. Having said that, I adore this unapologetic beauty. When I first sat down to watch The Wild Boys, there was resistance. That's what it is to try something new sometimes. Nostalgia is seductive. It can sing sweetly to us, tell us that we're safe in its arms, that it loves us, and you have to struggle against this embrace sometimes. My opening thought was, how dare someone make a film with the same title as a William Burroughs book and not make something super edgy and transgressive? Now that's nostalgia talking right there. That's me thinking about something from my past and making a mark against something new that I hadn't even experienced yet. Also, after a few minutes of watching The Wild Boys, I had to mentally apologise to Bertrand Mandico for ever thinking those words because this film is the William Burroughs adaptation we've always wanted but have never had. Which is not to say it's an adaptation of the Burroughs book, it's just, I mean, that thematically it's very close to Burroughs. The Wild Boys is about a group of young men, or boys, who commit an assault on one of their teachers and are punished by being put on a boat to make real men out of them. They're then taken to an island by the boat's super weird captain and gorge themselves on mystical hairy fruit and one by one they all turn into women. That is the film. The boys claim they're not bad boys at all. They're just prone to channeling the spirit of a chaos demon called Trevor who makes them do bad things. Trevor is represented with a jeweled skull. We never find out what Trevor is. He is just the thing that makes us do bad things. We all have a Trevor. On paper, I really shouldn't like The Wild Boys, not because of what happens in it, but because of how it's made. I tend to gravitate towards films which eschew artifice in favour of realism. I want films which enjoy being in the real world as much as I enjoy being in the real world, but that's not The Wild Boys at all. The Wild Boys is kind of like a Guy Madden film gone wild. It's not grounded in realism, it's more like a film which takes place inside a snow globe. Everything fake, everything carefully constructed. Largely black and white with bursts of colour, it has its own sense of time and place and it's a revel in artifice that normally just isn't for me. In fact, this level of artifice is so strong that when I first saw the film I was convinced it was largely shot on sets. But no, more fool me, it's principally shot on the island of Réunion. So take that me with my beliefs that I know everything. Added to that was the casting of actresses as the wild boys themselves. Sure, you might think, Ben, these are clearly actresses. But for me, the film did an incredible job of just getting you to forget that these are women. The way they talk, the way they walk, is all very recognisably male, and that resulted in the final transformation of the wild boys into women being giddily exciting for me. I was swept away by the deceit. It genuinely felt like I was watching a magic trick. Honestly, it had been so long since I'd seen a new film that surprised me so much at every turn, since I'd seen a new filmmaker do something so completely original and unexpected. I don't think it hurts that it uses a piece of music from The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward either, one of my favourite Giallo films. There's nostalgia still singing in the background. Anyway, since then I've watched everything Bertrand Mandico has done and so far nothing 
has been a disappointment. He's a unique voice, kind of like Hodorowsky in a way, but also totally his own thing. I look forward to watching his films for many years to come. He's also doing an A-plus job in giving interesting roles to women, and an A-plus-plus job in bringing back Alina Lowenson, one of the stars of independent cinema in the 90s. More nostalgia, I guess. But seriously, if you've become jaded by things feeling a little samey and you're looking for something new, check him out. At the same time, what I'm really recommending here is not necessarily go see a Bertrand Mandico film, but rather try jumping into the unknown. It doesn't happen often, but every year I watch about 50 films by people I've never heard of, and I've discovered a number of new voices by doing this, and I feel all the richer for it. People like Aruna Arunason, Lina Palmerson, Andrea Bagni, Ellen Cater, and Bruno Fazzani are all contemporary filmmakers I've discovered by just deciding to watch one of their films with no prior knowledge at all, and I have zero regrets. I don't read any reviews, I don't watch trailers, I just jump in and watch a film. These are the filmmakers who worked for me, but there are those out there who will work for you, it's just that you've never seen anything they've done yet. Don't fear the new or the unknown. Get away from those voices you know and those films you feel comfortable with and dive into something completely different. The temperature of the water might shock you at first, you might need a little time to acclimatise, but it's well worth it. Worlds I've never thought about, sights I've never seen before, people whose company I revel being in. Instead of listening to nostalgia, give in to Trevor's sultry demands, stray from the path, go somewhere you've never been before, and you too could find your love for cinema refreshed in ways you never thought possible.